Hello. So this gorgeous looking little aeroplane in front of us is the Sting S4 available from the marketplace in Microsoft Flight Simulator. I think I have a new favourite general aviation aeroplane and this is it. So it's absolutely wonderfully modelled. As you look around it, I have never seen the glass modelled this well in the simulator. And the body is modelled really nicely, of course, as well. So obviously you can move the instruments around, and or sorry, move the the um, surfaces around, and everything works as you would expect. But it's just really, really nicely done. Okay, so if we go and jump inside, the quality continues inside. So this is not a photograph. This is actually a video game, if you can believe that. So if we go and open the canopy, the animations are, are, are lovely. And even the material modelling is just wonderfully done. I mean, just looking at things like the yoke, it looks like it's made of plastic. Yeah, it's just... This aircraft uses a lot of carbon fibre, it's worth pointing out. So that's why we're seeing it everywhere. But yeah, just the level of modelling in this is just next level. It's very, very good. So if we go and pull the canopy back over us, let's go and see how we get it up and running then. So I'm just going to scoot our view down a bit so you can see some switches here. Just in, in terms of what you have in the cockpit, actually, let's just remove the yoke. You can see there's a, a lever here where you can adjust the pedal position for people with longer legs, which is quite a, a novel feature. There is a propeller auto or manual switch, uh, flap levers, choke, heating, full autopilot. Obviously it's got a glass cockpit, we'll see that in a moment when we fire everything up. You've got um, propeller um, condition and throttles. So we're going to go and move that propeller condition all the way forwards before we even get started. We've got the fuel cut-off valve here. But yeah, it's just... Um, look at how good the visibility is. It's absolutely crazy. It's, got, it's kind of like F-16 levels of, you know, sitting in a bubble above the aeroplane. So this is probably the best plane I've seen so far for sightseeing, bar none. And especially once you see what's hidden in here. This is a real game changer. So this aeroplane does full consumable and um, maintenance modeling that we've only seen on things like the 310 in the past. So you can suddenly see a status screen here. If we go into realism, you can switch on all of these things to have bits and pieces of the plane wearing out over time or going wrong. So you've got a maintenance screen as well where you can go and perform maintenance to fix it and do overhauls and so on and so forth. You can go and put um, payload and fuel within the aircraft wherever you want. And obviously that's going to affect its performance, as it should. There's also a, quite a detailed FAQ about issues you might face and how to resolve them. There's also lots of settings, so you can configure how the aeroplane operates, which I think is just, it's just endless. It's so good. So if we click back on the... the pocket that will go and put itself back away so we're just going to do a very basic um, circuit with it today just to see how it operates but the story just seems to get better and better with this aeroplane so if we go and scoot down so we can see the buttons here we've got the the master power switch which we're just going to switch on and we won't turn the instruments on just yet we just let's have a quick look so we've got the autopilot flaps fuel choke heating um you've got the emergency parachute it's got a fully animated emergency parachute as well it's absolutely insane so in similar to the sr22 but they've actually modeled it so you can use it and see it and it will collapse down once you land on the ground it's fantastic okay so if we go and start the engine up go engines running so it's got as I said it's got the um, altitude compensating carburetor on the engine so that's why we don't have a mixture control 
Um, if we go and turn on the instruments now, we'll obviously get the screens, the Garmin's firing up. These are the stock out of the box flight simulator Garmin's. So there's no big surprises here, but they all, you know, they work as you would imagine them they should. Um, we can turn on the pitot heat, strobe heat, uh, sorry, strobe heat, strobes, nav lights, landing lights, auxiliary fuel pump obviously isn't going to be needed, got the engine running already. Um, so yeah, let's go and take it for a circuit and see how we get on, shall we? See how it flies. So we're going to come off the parking, parking brake and ease the throttle forwards. You can turn the nose wheel too far, which will lock its movement so you're not actually going to go anywhere, which is quite interesting. So I'm just going to... It's a very light, nimble aeroplane as well. So you have to be careful about that with ground handling and kind of treat it with respect. You can see you can throw it around all over the place. Okay, so we are at Boonville D83 in the US, where I've done quite a lot of test flights recently. So we're going to open the engine up. So just coming through 80 knots takes off very easily it's quite powerful obviously it's very light yeah it just looks amazing doesn't it a great little aeroplane you can remove the tint from the windows it's one of the options in the tablet if you want I'll leave it on for today but just flying circuits I mean how amazing is the visibility from it? And you're getting reflections all the way around you in the cabin. You can just gently see them, you know, when you're flying circuits and stuff, especially on a day like today. It's just uncanny. I've never seen an aeroplane look so real in the simulator. It says Boonville down below us. So before we go and go in and do a touch and go, let's go and take it up higher in the sky. So you can see actually it's quite a fast aeroplane as well. So we're just into the yellow line there. So we'll continue on with a steep climb. So we're coming up to 30 degrees climb. And we'll pull the throttle back. So you can see it started to shake there and it will shake look but it's very very stable so if we turn back around go further up the valley and we'll try an accelerated stall So there's the airfield below us. Okay, so if we pull up... It's not going to do much, is it? You can't really get it to tumble at all. So it's incredibly stable. And if we try to get it to yaw and drop a wing that way, that won't work either. Yeah, it's incredibly stable. I did manage to get it to spin once um, for a few seconds while I was really testing it out a few minutes ago before I started recording and as soon as I just let go of the controls it went nose down and recovered itself you know within a second or two it was very very easy to get out I 
Okay, so let's see where the airfield is. So if we go full flaps, so we're coming in quite steep. So we'll try a side slip. So I'm going to side slip to the left. It's it's kind of going to do it not very much. The trouble is I guess such a small aeroplane you haven't got much side area to work with. But it is keeping the speed off. So we hold the side slip until we're quite low. And then level out at the last moment. So we straighten our view up as well. It's hardly a, um, a textbook approach, was it? So let's just hold it off the runway to see how it behaves. So it does do the computational fluid dynamics on the flight model of this aircraft, so you can have all kinds of fun and games. Okay, so I'm going to open the engine back up, flaps back up, got nose wheel authority, that's great. Rudder's working great. So, rotate. And let's do a bit better approach this time and actually consider what we're doing. But yeah, just the, the visibility in it is stunning, isn't it? And knowing that you have the autopilot and full flight planning in the glass cockpit as well, for just general tooling around, going on kind of tours, it's a bit of a no-brainer, isn't it? So this is the Sting S4. So I'm going to wind the throttle back, ready to do this approach nicely this time. How cool is that? So It was so easy to control that approach. It's kind of amazing really. Wheel brakes work nicely as well. Let's see what the turning circle is like on the ground then. So we'll put the flaps back up. Yeah, it can turn almost on a sixpence. Can turn, yeah, it can turn at its own length. It's crazy. Let's go and turn some of those lights off, shall we? Uh, landing light off. Turn the strobes off. That's a bit better. So yeah, if you're looking for a small GA aeroplane, you can't go far wrong with this. It's the Sting S4. And just the the modelling with the, you know being able to have the consumables and the rest of it. And it's not too expensive either. It's in the marketplace. Go and have a look at it. Just 
just roll in, go and park it up, and switch everything back off again. So hopefully you enjoyed this little test flight with the Sting S4. You can't go far wrong with it really, it's very very good. I could do with a bit of practicing with um, taxiing it though, as you can see. I keep um, locking out the car string on the nose wheel which is st stopping me from going anywhere. Parking brake on. Obviously, with this kind of engine, there's no mixture to pull to starve it, so you just turn the magnetos off. Uh, fuel condition, sorry, the uh, fuel condition, the propeller condition can come back, so it's a variable pitch propeller, which is quite cool. Uh, so turn everything back off, and we are good to go again. But how cool is that? Should we go and look at the stats on the tablet? So we can see we've got some hours starting to tick up. Uh, so we've got air pressure in the tyres being measured. It's, it's very clever, isn't it? Obviously we weren't simulating the realism, but if you want to do that, you can. But anyway, there we go. Sting S4 in Microsoft Flight Simulator. It's very, very nice. Anyway, I'll see you again soon. Take care.